And now our fourth story out front, coming clean on Benghazi. So the U.S. ambassador to the U.N., Susan Rice, went to Capitol Hill today to clear the air. She said, look, the talking points I used after the attack on the U.S. consulate in Libya were wrong. She met with three of her most outspoken critics, Republican Senators John McCain, Lindsey Graham, and Kelly Ayotte, to set the record straight. Now, you probably know this by now, but Rice had gone on five Sunday talk shows days after the attack and called it a spontaneous demonstration sparked by an anti-Muslim film and did not mention the link to al-Qaeda. Now, after all of this today, taking on her critics, the Republican senators weren't impressed. Bottom line, I'm more disturbed now than I was before that the uh, 16th September uh, explanation about how four Americans died in Benghazi, Libya by Ambassador Rice I think does not do justice to the reality at the time and in hindsight clearly was completely wrong. Rice maintained she did nothing wrong, issuing a statement saying, we stressed that neither I nor anyone else in the administration intended to mislead the American people at any stage of this process. Peter Brooks is a former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense. General Wesley Clark is the former NATO Supreme Allied Commander and, of course, a former Democratic presidential candidate. Great to see both of you. Peter, let me start with you. Senator McCain was asked, who do you blame more at this point, Ambassador Rice or President Obama? He said the president is ultimately responsible. So do you agree this is no longer about Susan Rice, that she has, she has cleared the air about her name? I don't think so. I mean, I, I let the senator speak for himself, and I wasn't in that meeting behind closed doors today, but her coming forth with a mea culpa about these talking points clearly didn't satisfy these uh, three senators, and I'm not sure if there's other senators out there who are not satisfied with it. She keeps her current job at the U.N. The question is, Aaron, of course, is if the president nominates her to replace Hillary Clinton as secretary of state, how the Senate will feel about that at that time. General Clark, how, how should they, they feel about that? Should well, he go ahead and nominate her? Yes, I think she's a, a very effective and a very loyal uh, public servant. Uh, I've worked with Susan since 1994. Mm -hmm. She's honest. She's straightforward. She has America's best interests at heart. She's a person who gives 100% to the job and to the country. Mm -hmm. I think she'd be an outstanding Secretary of State. So I think he should nominate her. I don't think there's anything behind this. You know, I've, I've looked at this from the beginning. I've been on your show a couple of times yes. about it. And I've followed all the information that's out in public. I don't think there's anything behind it other mm -hmm. than a political um, snowball that got started pre-election. Was she too loyal to go ahead with those talking points if she had questions? No, I don't think she was too loyal. Look, when you're on the press, you're not going to release classified information. It's mm -hmm. clear that there was some CIA activity there. What exactly it was and what the CIA's total involvement was, why there was a consulate there, it wasn't even a consulate. It didn't do normal consulate duties. What was it all about? Right. We won't know until the investigation is completed and yes. is released. And, and, then that, and that takes time. But Senator Ayotte uh, said after today's meeting that when you're an ambassador to the United Nations, I want to get both of your thoughts on this, but Peter, you first. She said, look, you go well behind unclassified, uh, beyond, I'm sorry, unclassified uh, talking points in your daily preparation responsibilities. I guess the implication being that she would have been aware of other things that were different or contradicted directly what she actually went and said on television. Does this mm -hmm. cast any doubt on, on her story? I mean, General Clark has made what I've heard from everybody who knows her, that she is an incredibly honest and forthright right person. Well, I think there's a bigger question here, Aaron, and that's the credibility of the administration on these national security issues mm -hmm. and whether they politicized a, a national security issue would led to the death of four Americans. I mean, I, do, I don't agree that the American people were not misled on this. I don't know how five days afterwards a senior official, first of all, I don't understand why Susan Rice was in that chair as opposed to Hillary Clinton. As a U.N. ambassador, she had nothing to do with what happened in Benghazi. But that's, that besides that, you know, the mm -hmm. issue here is, is you know, why why did they tell us what they told us? Why were they so sure so soon and now so wrong? You don't even hear anybody talking about the video. And the, and the State Department investigation won't get at what the administration told us about, uh, about Benghazi. It'll get at why Benghazi happened, the security issues, did they have enough security, mm -hmm. et cetera, how this ambassador died. So there's a lot of issues out here, and credibility is number one. General Clark, what about the point that Peter just raised? Why was Susan Rice put out there? Is it think, possibly because Hillary Clinton knew more than she was allowed no, to say? No, I suspect that Hillary Clinton was either out of the country or wanted a Sunday morning where she didn't have to go on television uh, five times. It's, you know, when you're working inside the administration, it's seven days a week. It's nonstop. There's 
a crisis mm -hmm. every hour. Somebody's always calling But we you know there were substantial revisions, the intelligence community has said so, to the bullet points. So presumably some people had seen the unrevised version, which included the Al-Qaeda link and other things, right? She may have seen it. But yeah. if it was classified, she's not going to go out there and expose it. She's mm -hmm. going to relay what the intelligence community says. This is what's safe to say. Now, right. you could go back and say, well, the intelligence community shouldn't have tried to protect the fact that we knew it was al-Qaeda or al-Qaeda involvement. Right. They shouldn't have tried to do that. But that's an intelligence community judgment. Right, so somebody so else, uh, you mm -hmm. know, the director of national intelligence, the director of the CIA, mm -hmm. somebody on that staff, has to answer for that. That's not Susan's problem. Susan is out there and she's authorized what to say. The administration Aaron, always you know, has an early morning phone call on Sunday. They go over what mm -hmm. the issues are and basically you're told here's what you can say in an unclassified way. Yeah. I, Aaron, I think there's a problem here. First of all, they could have told us that there were other potential scenarios out there. Instead of telling us it was related to a vid video and it was a demonstration, which both turned out to be completely wrong now. So I think they could have come out. They could have been more uh, cautious and said there's a lot of possibilities out here. Uh, and this is this is one of them that we're looking at, you know, the video and the demonstration. But I think that they really did did not want to say on September 11th that an American sovereign territory had been attacked by an Al-Qaeda organization. I mean, maybe, General Clark, they shouldn't have, they should have said we don't know, as opposed to saying one version. Well, I mean, maybe well, hindsight, well, they maybe, would have done it differently. Maybe they should have, but you know, yeah. hindsight's always perfect. Yeah. And when you're looking at something like this and you weigh it against the full range of issues the United States is facing, hmm. between the physical cliff and Iran and Syria and a lot of other things, you can't justify the amount of partisan heat that's gone into this issue on what Susan Rice says. So there has to be something behind it, but beyond getting at the facts. Right. This is an attack on the administration. It's got partisan motives. And you have to ask, why is it? Because there were no consequences hmm. of having said what they said. People didn't say, oh, well, I'm going to vote for the administration because there was just a demonstration that caused this. I wouldn't vote for them if they were actually attacked by Al Qaeda. Come on. Right. That doesn't make sense. All right. Well, certainly it has become partisan, which is a big tragedy about the whole thing. I think it we is. all can agree. Thanks to, all, uh, to both of you. We appreciate it, General Clark and Peter Brooks.